Okay. All right. It's about that time. It is about that time. I am so excited for this show today. Hey, everybody. Hi. Welcome to the Somanad Show with Sonia. I'm so glad that you guys are here today. I brought some of my people in, some of my friends, my family, and I am so excited to share them with you today. Welcome to the Somanad Show with Sonia. Woo! We have great things coming ahead, so be sure to tune in here live at noon Central Time every single Wednesday to see what we are tapping into. Okay. My goodness, my goodness. How did y'all like the show last week with all the moms dealing with everything that they're going through with their littles. What was that called, Gabe? Let's see. That was um, COVID parenting work-life balance. Can I just say I'm so grateful my kids are grown and I'm not going through that. I cannot imagine trying to homeschool these babies today. I don't even know how they do the math anymore. So, uh, yeah, that was a great show. So everybody go back and check this out. Uh, here at the bottom of the page, there's a little share button. You can click on that share button and share it to your page. Invite all your friends to watch and to participate with us. You guys right down there at the bottom in the comments, you can go ahead and enter your questions that you have for the panel today, um, concerns that you might have, uh, you know, any any rumors that you've heard, any, any misconceptions that you may have or whatever, anything that you have heard about the life of a flight attendant, um, put it there in the comments, and today we will try to get to as much as we can. Now, they all know we only have one hour, and they also know that we could easily sit down and uh, we could knock out this show in about 30 seconds. 48 hours. So we will try to just get to it as fast as possible. But first of all, I have a restaurant that I want to highlight today. All right. So every single week, I will highlight and promote one smaller restaurant, privately owned restaurant uh, here in the United States. And I pick one or two every single week, you guys. And, you know, it's a Solmonad way to be out there supporting those small businesses, you guys. Even if you just order, you know, once a week, once every other week, order, go pick it up. Uh, some of the restaurants you can go in. I think they're seating up to like 25, 50 percent, whatever's going on in your state support those small businesses support those restaurants and so today our restaurant of choice uh, thank you so much for the hookup Amina is smoke in the pit smoke in the pit you know I lived in Memphis Tennessee back in 1989 1990 that's where I met my husband and we eloped um, anyway you want to talk about some good barbecue my 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 and so I saw this it just made my mouth water Amina was highlighting this the other day and encouraging folks to go and set up a group to order and go pick it up and I said oh my goodness girl I'm going to highlight this on the show this week so you want a quarter rack half rack full rack <laughs> full slab get it look at that menu you guys it is all there you want the greens, you want the chitlins, you want the mac and cheese, you want that peach cobbler. My goodness, I'm sure it is all there. Pick it up. It is local. It is a black-owned business. It is right here in a suburb of the Twin Cities in Burnsville, Minnesota. So check them out. Support that restaurant. Uh, take a screenshot of it. Check out their website. You can call and pick up and uh Find out what their hours are. It looks like it's 612-315-3145. Smoke in the pit. Chicken, ribs, and catfish. Don't want to forget about that catfish. All right, you guys. Looks like Grubhub delivers as well. Mm. Wow, excuse me. My mouth is watering. Oh, my goodness. I can almost smell the smoke from here. <laughs> All right, you guys. So I'm just going to get right to it because I cannot wait to share my friends with you guys and my former colleagues. Y'all remember I was an international flight attendant for 21 years for Northwest Airlines, and uh, they were about to merge with another major carrier and were offering an early out package. So at that time, my family and I decided that I would go ahead and step away from that long, wonderful wonderful career um, to go ahead and pursue other avenues and allow other people uh, to come up under me and they were hired more people and all of that um, but you know once a stew always a stew jet fuel runs right here through our veins <laughs> and uh, this is our 10th year you guys and I have all at the Solmonad show with Sony and I have always wanted to have a flight attendant show because I think flight attendants are 
such unique people. Um, my goodness, we will get to that in a little bit. We are, I, I, I'm not trying to brag on myself, but you guys, flight attend- international flight attendants are a very unique and special group. Um, and uh, I think that there's a lot of misconceptions and a lot of uh, things and areas and aspects of, that people just don't understand about the industry. So I brought my friends on here to talk about that today. All right. So first of all, let's see. Can I, um, Gabe, can I see my guys up on the screen? I think I was starting with Shane first. Shane Horn. Corner from Hello. Seattle. Hey. How you doing? <laughs> I'm good, honey. Yeah, I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for joining us from Seattle. And it's sunny Seattle today, isn't it? Yeah, partly cloudy, but yeah. <laughs> Well, I thank you so much for being here, Shane. My goodness, we go back, uh, I don't know, 30-some-odd years. Same with all, all three of our guests today. And, um, yeah, Shane, is he, he is my brother, used to be uh, a near neighbor to us. And when our kids were little and we'd be driving him to church or we'd be driving him to, to Costco, we had our special honk for Uncle Shane and Uncle Brooks. boop boo doo 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 <laughs> So I love you so much. Um, you are just stellar uh, in this industry, and, and that's why I wanted you on. So we'll get back to you in a second, Shane. Okay, right. next up here we have Jacqueline. Hey, Jacqueline, I'm so glad that you're here. Jacqueline Meadows is here. Where are you calling or, or where are you joining us from today? You're calling in from Detroit, Michigan. Okay. And thank you so much for having me as part of this, this forum. It's so much needed, and thank you so much. I yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, Jack. I'm so glad that you're here. We love Motown. God bless Motown. God bless Seattle. Um, looks like Carolyn is just making a, a minor adjustment there with her ears. So we'll get over to Carolyn in just a little bit. I should ask, uh, Shane, let me go back to you. How long have you been flying? Uh, ironic you say that. Uh, today is my 35th anniversary. <gasps> Happy yeah. anniversary! Oh, wow. Class of War of eighty six. Oh congratulations. my gosh! Class four of eighty six. Congratulations! congratulations. Wow. It's crazy. Thirty five years. Wow! Congrats! Yeah, I was nine of eighty nine. Right. Wow! When we get home, I'm gonna pop a bottle of champagne and then right. I'm gonna toast to you. Okay. That's Happy good, anniversary. Thank you. And Jackie, how about you? How many years you you in this here? Uh, Thirty one. 31 wow. years of January 23rd, so it feels like year number one. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> Happy anniversary to you, too. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're not bringing on any newbies here, are we? <laughs> no, no, we haven't. <laughs> okay, and then I want to introduce to you my other sister, my friend Carolyn. I'm so glad that you are here. Welcome, and where are you joining us from today? Uh, actually, I'm in Pittsburgh today. Um, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. This isn't where yeah. you normally reside, though, is it? Uh, well, actually, we have two homes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Pittsburgh is one of them, but I spend the majority of my time in Paris. Mm-hmm. And so. how long was your career? Um. Actually, a little over 35 years because I didn't start at Northwest. Okay. Um, yeah, I started at TWA. So a little bit more than 35 years. Wow. Uh, I took the retirement package in August. Yeah. So like Shane, this would have been my 35th anniversary with Delta slash Northwest yeah. in uh, November. Wow. Yeah, that's a that's a lot of years. Collectively, my goodness, we're all looking at about a hundred and... 28, 129 years here collectively. My goodness. My, my, my. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay. Now, if I'm looking down, it seems like I'm not paying attention to y'all. I am, but I am uh, managing here the show on the phone and on the iPad both. So I don't want to miss any comments that are coming in. And then my producer Gabe is in the studio watching as well. So um, hope you guys have shared this and invited your friends to join in on the conversation. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get to it. I have some people who have submitted questions and uh, we will address some of those and you know you guys can just uh, chime in uh, you know I mean unless I address you specifically please just feel free to chime in and let's share a little bit of light on the world of the international flight attendant okay so 
uh, Carolyn, like you and I were talking about yesterday, one thing that people always say is, uh, and I don't know if this came from the 50s or 60s or what, but um, it, it's not really a thing. But they always ask us, what is your route? So, <laughs> so, um, and, and I'm going to link that in with, you know, what would a typical trip look like? Well, again, that depends. So who wants to start at that? I mean, it's, it's so varied. Anybody want to lead off with that? I'm pretty much international out of Seattle. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, uh, being the purser in the purser position, it just, uh, you know, the trips I desire to fly are international, mostly Asia. Yeah. Um, don't care to go across the pond as much. It's, it's just harder on the body for me yeah. out of Seattle than it is going to Asia. So yeah. prefer going to Shanghai, Beijing, uh, Haneda, and miss a lot of our south south um, mm. destinations, but it is what it is. And yeah. So. Mm -hmm. All right. How about you, ladies? I, I would say um, primarily being uh, based in Detroit, we have uh, international flying as well as domestic, but being a purser as well, uh, I do love European flying. Um, mm -hmm. I, I try to stay away from the Asia flying because it is hard on the body. Right. The other, other, opposite. other entrepreneur <laughs> of, of adventures going on, but I love Europe. You know, my number one spot I always call my home away from home is, is Amsterdam, mm -hmm. London, and Paris. So I'm very, very happy, very, very honored to be a leader on those flights. Uh, it's great people. We normally fly with the same group of people. So we all jail together, work together as a team, yeah. and get it done and take care of the customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and getting it done. And you say the same people, and so um, a lot of people think it literally is, is not really changing or evolving. And, and I've always told people, you know, well, I, I mean, I worked with a few thousand colleagues. <laughs> you know, I mean, at our seniority, you know, you're bidding similar trips you know if you want the Amsterdam then it goes in seniority order and it's going to be about that and and you mm -hmm. know it's a lot of the the same people over and over and then there are you know a few reserves are thrown in or a couple junior people or somebody dropped it and mm -hmm. picked it up and you know mm -hmm. and Carolyn how about you how about you uh well I retired out of JFK um mm -hmm. I was based on the west coast Honolulu um Detroit. I think I started my career in Detroit, actually. Mm -hmm. So the flights that I was doing towards the end of my career was mostly Africa. Mm -hmm. um, that became, you know, one of my favorite destinations. Yeah. Uh, of course, I did Europe because, you know, I love Europe. Yes. <laughs> um, but just like Jackie was saying, um, and Shane also, I'm also in the person program. Or I was in the person program. Mm -hmm. And um, it allows you to meet, I think, more people that way, yeah. more uh, colleagues that yeah. way. Um, there are colleagues that remember me that I don't remember them and i'm sure. sorry about that <laughs> sure yeah yeah but mm -hmm. um yeah i mean uh you get to choose where you want to go and that's yeah. one of the wonderful things about our job is mm -hmm. it's so diverse and it's so you know it changes all the time it's very flexible yeah yeah. You know, my jam was always the 3D international trip. So I started my career in Detroit in, in 1989. And um, pretty much they told me where I would go at that at that time in my <laughs> life. <laughs> and then yes, transferred to Memphis and um, had to learn to embrace the DC-9. And I flew from this ville to that ville to this ville and that ville. <laughs> had Jimmy Dean on my flight and everybody was twanging all over the place. But anyway... Um, <laughs> And then I was able to head back home. You know, I'm from Seattle, and so did the L.A. base when it opened October 1st of 1990. Seattle, San Fran, Seattle, Detroit, and and that is where, you know, I had, I had finished there in Detroit. But my jam really was those three-day trips because I was rearing a young family. And so, it, you know, it just didn't behoove our family for me to do the five and seven day trips. The three day thing was really my jam. The three day Asia's when I was West Coast based and then out of Detroit, of course, the three day Europe's was was my thing. So I did get to miss out on the Bombay's. I did get to miss out and not get to but did miss out on, you know, all that South flying chain because, of course, that involved the seven, nine, eight or 11 day, 10 day trip or, you know, whatever, however it was configured. Um 
But again, that's because I had a young family. But isn't it so unique, you guys, that the schedules really are set up that there is something for everybody? Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, um, the the illegals. I mean, it's called an illegal, you guys. It's not really illegal. It's legal, you know, where they would go to the <laughs> air- airport and and you know hop on a little DC nine or a three twenty at ten or eleven o'clock at night and and just go on a thirty forty testify. minute flight. And I can testify. I do those occasionally throughout the year, and yeah. they're great. Yeah, right. Place in Spokane, Washington, sleep yes. six hours and back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I remember going to. Um, um, uh, what's GRR Grand Rapids? Um, yeah, <laughs> out of out of Detroit, and then of course in Memphis, they were all over from this bill to that bill, um, you know. And so it would just be the one little leg, and it'd be you know a thirty minute, twenty minute, forty minute flight. You lay over um, for possibly five or six hours, right, and turn around at six a.m. and come back. But all of the moms and dads are doing that as well, or just folks like Shane who want to squeeze in a few extra hours and not be gone so long. Well, my career uh, flying changed a lot because of having uh, a child. Mm -hmm. So when I started flying, my daughter was three months old. Mm-hmm. When I started my career, okay. um, she's now 36. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> uh, when she was a young child, I did more of the the illegals, the turnarounds, the yeah. short flights. Um, uh-huh. When we were on the West Coast, my thing was San Francisco, Honolulu, you turn around and fly right back. Yeah. So you could get all of your your months flying done in seven days. So, Except yeah. you were exhausted to Except a degree. Except you're exhausted. <laughs> and, and let's talk about that to a degree that most people don't understand. Because, you know, you have the oxygen depletion at, at 30, 40,000 feet and the dehydration factor and all the germs and everything that we're exposed to. So it is so much more taxing on the body going to work being in the air than it was on the ground. Yeah. Melatonin and Ambien become your good friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Uh-huh. Exactly. Right. Right. <laughs> and oh. coffee. Lots and of coffee. coffee. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then you just become this espresso snob, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely a coffee snob. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Um, okay. So, uh, who was it? Jacqueline, was it you guys talking about? Um, I wanted you to tap into, uh, or was it Carolyn? Anyway, commuters. You guys have all commuted, and we've all known commuters. Who wants to tackle that one? What does that mean? What does that look like? Not me. I'll let Shane and Carolyn handle that. I did, <laughs> I did, enough to I did a short ride in Detroit and stayed in Detroit. So I don't know about that life, but I always had empathy for the commuter. So I'll let you guys. Have it. <laughs> I that. thought you had commuted to Chicago for a short season. You stayed. You stayed in Motown the whole that time. That was me. Huh? Oh, okay. All right. That was Taylor. They got us. They still get us confused. Twins? <laughs> they do. They do. Yeah, they call us twin because it's all they think she's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So, what does it mean wow, to be a commuter? Carolyn and Carolyn was me <laughs> for years. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. All right, so what does it mean to be a commuter? Well, I guess I'm the ultimate commuter. Yes, since you I was are. commuting from Paris. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I pretty much commuted my entire career, I have to say. Um, there were a few times where I lived at base, but being um, the furthest commuter, which probably applies to, you know, uh, all over. Um, Commuting from Paris to JFK, wow. um, it was difficult. I am not a person that likes to come in the night before. Mm-hmm. A lot of flight attendants do. Nope. Um, luckily, we do keep a house in the United States. So in between my trips, I would I would get on a plane and actually fly to Pittsburgh if I didn't stay in New York. Yeah. So a lot of times I would fly in from Paris that morning, Mm -hmm. take a nap and either fly back to Africa that night or back to Paris that night. So basically I would turn around and go right back. And it's actually, I mean, it sounds horrifying, but it was actually easier for me to do that because my body stayed on the same time zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I know. Um, 
Dave um, out of Detroit. Jackie, do you know, he was my classmate. Um, David, oh, wait, he was my roommate, too, in Detroit. He commutes to <laughs> Thailand. He has a wife there and, and, like, two little kids. Yeah, I mean, there's... Dave, there, what's his last name? Um, Oh, I wasn't just, Lee, was it? No, I'm drawing a blank. Um, Caucasian know, guy, and he Lee. married a Thai woman. Anyway, he commutes from Thailand to Detroit, so he comes in. Oh, yes. Yeah. I know who you're talking about. Yes. yes. I don't can't remember his last. I, I flew in a, a seven-day a seven with him. A couple of, a couple of years ago, yes, I know yes. exactly who you're talking. About. Yes, yes, right. Yes. And he was my uh, my roommate too in Detroit, right out oh, of okay. training. Yes, I'm, I'm Dave. I'm so sorry because I, I, you know, with this TBI <laughs> I have, my memory is just not the best. But I mean, yeah, I mean, you talk about some crazy commutes, and then in the United States, um, mm -hmm. you know, so many people live uh, like what Carolyn said outside of base. And then mm -hmm. you have to fly to base, and you have to be there on on time to report on time. Um, for me personally, I did not fly in the night before either. Um, with three little kids the day before, that was my day. I, that was my day off still, my time with my family. Um, so I would fly in the day before and then do the Paris or the Tokyo or the Osaka or, you know, whatever. Um, and... Mm -hmm. Uh, I was only one time zone off when I was Des Moines to Detroit. Uh, otherwise, when I was Seattle and L.A., I was living in in Seattle. And there was a big group of us from Seattle that had commuted uh, to San Francisco and to L.A. And um, Alaska Airlines back in the day gave us a $5 commuter pass. I don't know if you guys remember that. They gave us a $5 commuter pass. And you just walk up to the counter, slide it off yourself, give it to them, hop on a flight. And so I used to always say to people, they're like, well, what do you mean? And I said, a lot of people drive to work. We fly to work. So right. when you get in your, work in, in your car and you drive to work... You know, for those of us who are commuters, we actually fly to get to work, and then we have to get ourselves situated. I mean, sometimes, you guys, I would just go in the World Club, and um, I had my favorite little chair, and I would just hole up right there in front of the fireplace and um, eat my breakfast there and just sleep. And, you know, yeah, you have to sit, or, sit around and wait five, six, eight hours, you know, whatever it was. But it was just easier for me and my family to go in the day before and then do the trip. Shane, what are you laughing at? <laughs> Shane, your 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 mic is off. Turn on <laughs> turn on your mic. Your mic's on mute, honey. <laughs> He's over there. That's all right. I have, I have uh -oh. to say the commute from Paris to JFK uh -huh. was easier than the commute from Pittsburgh to Detroit. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Were you it's bummed? logistic. It sounds bizarre, but it's the logistics. Right. Yeah, it, it is. It's it is. It's it's the logistics. I know that's a truth. Um my commuting from Memphis to LA was very difficult because of course we were the only carrier that even operated that route. Um and even though there were tons of carriers that went back and forth between San Francisco and L.A., um, we were bumped. I mean, we were doing the O.J. Simpson through the terminals all the time, <laughs> you know. We were driving home. Yeah. yeah. I, seriously, we were, oh, my gosh, you remember that, Shane? Like, we would get in from Tokyo, and we would yeah. look at the board, and we're like, okay, after being bumped so many times off of United, Southwest, Northwest, uh -huh. And Alaska, right? It's like there's a lot of flights. What's the problem? Like you're talking about from Pittsburgh, but it wasn't easy. And we, we would some an alternate direction and go we, and yes, do what you have to do to get home. It's like okay, I I've got it, you know. And we're all going over all these different scenarios. Okay, I got it. We go back to we go to Honolulu, Honolulu to Vancouver, Vancouver <laughs> down to Portland, rent a car three hours and drive north. Yes, we can get there by midnight tomorrow. I mean, it was so pathetic sometimes. <laughs> Those are crazy times, <laughs> especially over a hall around a holiday. <laughs> oh no, it's oh that was yeah that was the I, worst. I actually did a Seattle to Detroit myself and my um, best friend Ann Preby. We had to take a cargo flight from Seattle, <gasps> and we were supposed to go to Ohio somewhere in Ohio. We didn't even know where. We just thought, hey, that's close enough to. <laughs> this right. was at Christmas time, and it was it was crazy. We I, we I had to sleep in the back. And got to go up front where it was warm with the pilots. Yeah. And mid-flight, she opened the door, and I was freezing to death. This pilot had gotten on that works for, uh. um, back then, Flying Tigers. And he had brought his sleeping bag, and he had this big, you know, park on and everything. I'm like, what the hell? 
And I had just my rain jacket on. It was absolutely miserable. And we landed in somewhere <laughs> in Ohio and we took a flight out of Cincinnati or I can't even remember. It was long. And then we flew. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you do what you got to do. You know what, Shane, yeah. in, in 89, when we were first hired, we did not have the flight benefits. Right. Yeah. Oh, no. And I, for six months, and I actually did the same thing on my own. It was $250 um, for me to go, it's like to Cincinnati or, or um, St. Louis or something. And I hopped on a DCA cargo plane in the cockpit with the pilots. <laughs> yes. And they did. They offered for me to, to go in the back and sleep. There's no heat back there. I was, and I was like, no, I just came back up in the cockpit. I was exhausted. I mean, yeah, I was 21 years old. I had no clue. I was all by myself, but I was so desperate to get back home, you know, Ugh, the things we do. But you know what? This is a great segue because I want to talk about how creative and resourceful flight attendants are. International flight attendants, we can Olivia Pope any situation, right? <laughs> True. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any um, scenarios or examples that you guys can give us where, where you've been working or or um, or even non revving where you've been around the world and these things pop up and it's like, uh, OK, so we've got Air Italia and then I'll transfer and get on JL and then we'll, you know, or with hotels mm -hmm. or how about tri well, 9 you know. 11 is a good example of that. Yes. Talk to us about that. Well, I, I fortunately kind of missed all the drama of all that um myself and two other colleagues and a, a non-flight attendant friend we were all on our way to the greek islands yes for 10 days oh that's right yes we left on on the 10th to amsterdam and then got down to um santorini on the 11th but just mm -hmm. as we were stepping off the plane people are saying oh yeah there was a plane that crashed in the united states and we're like oh okay you know any other news and so i mean that whole 10 day experience and playing with a non airline person who was totally freaked out, two young children, mm. another one with one ch child, another one with two children, you know, oh. all in young and we're all yeah. in the Greek islands for 10 days and there's nothing we could do. We were no. totally so far removed from everything that was going on in the world mm -hmm. that we just, you know, we stayed and we had a great time and, you know, it was a challenge getting back home to the States, but we, we did it and, yeah. you know, we got to Amsterdam and they took good care of us and we got home to our family. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I, um, I think being in the, in aviation, when we call airports in crisis or we show up at a gate in crisis, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're talking to the cargo guys, the baggage handlers, the gate agents, any flight attendant, you just let them know who you are. Right. And say, I need help with X, Y, Z. Boy, things happen fast. They do, they do take care of you. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. true. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That's the camaraderie that we have being, uh, you know, gate agents or flight attendants. I mean, I commend the, uh, the, the Amsterdam. They're KLM. But you know what? They really, really care. Yeah. I mean, hey, Jackie, what do you need? Hey, I didn't get this. And even the caterers, when it gets down to the caterers or someone needing a wheelchair, their whole wheelchair system is totally different. They're not using wheelchairs. They use electric carts. So right. if you have to, you know, get to that person can't walk off the aircraft and walk down that long jetway in Amsterdam, they're willing to help. I, I mean, I mean, it's great. To have that camaraderie with them, uh, with KLM, that that Carolyn and I were stuck in. in we were. Amsterdam. We were stuck in Amsterdam time, together. But, yes. Mm. Yes. And how many times did we go? How many together during nine eleven? That whole week, we would get dressed and we're going home. No, nope, cancel. Go right back. They were like, "Hey, when we when we got back, uh, finally was able to come home." They felt our pain. They felt our anxiety. They felt, yeah. you know, it brought, it really hit home, like, what really happened. And they were, they all gave, I still have the keychain of the, of the, uh, the house. I don't know if you still have yours, Carolyn, the blue and white windmill house. They gave us a keychain. And everybody just lost it. I mean, they were like, we're sorry what happened in, in the United States, but we are your family, too. And, and I still carry that 
that with me is one of one of the reasons why I still fly the Amsterdam route because of the, the people that work 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 with us and, and just like family. You see them every week. If you're not there, you don't tell them you're on vacation. They're going to ask, "Where were you the last two weeks? <laughs> Where were you? Sure. I was on vacation. Okay, I'm sorry." Let you know. <laughs> yeah, Amsterdam. And I'm on vacation for two weeks. Amsterdam, Amsterdam is is like going home. It was like home away from home for me for a very, very long, a very long time. And Jackie, like Jackie's saying, we were stuck together for a week, and we were actually our whole crew was lost in the system. They had no idea where we were. Oh, really? But the hotel really took great care of us. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I remember um, when they finally found us, we had been in Amsterdam for eight days. I don't know if you left before we did, Jackie. Perhaps you, you did. But I think I did. They I think I left the day before you. I left the yeah. day before you. Right, right. Yeah. Right yeah. Yeah, because they couldn't, they couldn't find us. We were completely lost in cruise scheduling. Wow. It was such a mess. Um, they did find us. We ended up deadheading on KLM back to Paris. And we worked the first flight from Paris back to um, the United States. And they had done some equipment swap. It was back in the DC-10 sure. days. Yeah. And it wasn't the, um, the live flat seats mm-hmm. that we used to have on the DC-10 for international. It was a domestic DC-10 that they sent. And I remember one of the passengers getting very upset with us and, and you know, started berating us. And, I mean, we had been through it. We yeah. had turned around from Paris, went back to Amsterdam. You know, so we were we hadn't seen our families. We were distraught, and yeah. this passenger got very upset with us. And I remember the captain coming back and talking to that passenger, and he was like, "You know, you will not treat my crew this way." Yeah, right. And you know, if you are dissatisfied with not being able to lie flat for eight hours, you are free to leave. That's right. And, you know, I mean, I was the person on that flight and I was trying so hard to hold it together. And I just remember so many of the flight attendants breaking down and crying and it was amazing, you know, Mm -hmm. and and all of us were together in that hotel. We were actually on lockdown in the hotel. They locked us in. Mm-hmm. because of terrorist activity so it comes full circle to deal with just covid and and even the insurrection on that day i was you know going to cq for training and i had anxiety the whole day yeah. it was just it was I'm sure you know it was traumatic to me yeah so what was yeah yeah I'm going this is the united states but dealing with that in the airline industry it, it's 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 crazy yeah. to to, to to deal with those kind of, you know, um, setbacks and we still go on and we do our job the way we have to do it. Yeah. And with professionalism and, and, sure. and, and again, just, just the resources. I mean, you know, flight attendants are, they are, they are 911. They are the police. They are the nurse. They are the medics. Yeah. They are the doctors. They are the psychiatrists. They are Nanny McPhee. You know, they they are oh, yeah. the the counselor. You know, they're not just there to you know pop open a, a bottle of Bordeaux and uh, you know clear your plate and serve you chicken or beef. I mean, um, you know, and and our training I think was. Um, the best in the industry um, as far as the United States. And, and I, I believe and understand that it still is, you know, um, even as Delta has taken over um, Northwest Airlines, um, the training is excellent and, and it is not as much service focused as it is um, the with the medical emergencies and safety and security because we are the first line of defense for our passengers. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And right. they you know, definitely look. They definitely look to to us for uh, body language, uh, facial expressions, yeah. and uh, you know, um, we 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 you know, Shane. Just to recap on what Shane said, we, we still have a job to do. Right. You know, we still have to remain professional and calm in any yes. situation to keep that whole aircraft calm. Mm-hmm. And, and and you know, where where everything right here together yeah. and, and and to keep keep that chip and being cursors you're we're the leader they're going right, to bounce right. off of our energy yep and if, if we're down they're down if right. we're up and willing to do it they're up and willing to do it yeah 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I and I have to say that both Jackie and Shane are two of the best pursers that mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. in our company. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I agree. Thank yeah. you Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And and Carolyn too, I flew with you um when you were a uh, purser as well and just just exemplary leadership uh from all three of you guys and just just that strong, confident uh, gracious, patient, um, knowledgeable, uh, decision making when those kinks, you know, happen and, and they do, I mean, literally almost on every single flight, there is something that's going to happen. Those red flags are definitely going to come up, but it's a matter of how, you know, those fires are being put out. And I've, I've watched all of you just exceed, uh, you know, anybody's expectations. And I commend all of you in your level of, of excellence and professionalism. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're welcome. Um, you know, I, as we were talking earlier, I was saying uh, international flights are, are so unique and so resourceful. And it would just behoove everybody to have a, an international flight attendant in their corner in their life. <laughs> <laughs> If you want a problem solved, yes. yes. Right. <laughs> yeah, if you want a problem solved and you want somebody who is bold and strong and confident and probably is already experienced in walking down this road anyway, you want to have a flight attendant in your corner. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, if I had my own big company and I were looking through resumes and if I saw that show up on a resume, um, they, they would be at the front of the line for, for me to interview them for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Can we talk about uh, security issues and medical issues? I know you guys have also experienced so many over the years, but I want Mm -hmm. our viewers to understand when I say we are the, you know, the the first responders and right there on the front line. Give us some examples, just kind of throw some out that have happened, you know, seizures, heart attacks, um, labor pains. What else? I've, I've had, I've had probably every medical issue. Um, by the grace of God, I've never had anyone die on my flight. Um, I've had colleagues that had lost uh, customers on the flight. And, um, you know, but security issues. I mean, I've been really blessed to have a great career in 31 years where I didn't have any serious issues. Um, and people are like, what? I've had this. I had that. I've been really, really blessed. I mean, I've had issues where we got it under control and, and you know, we have fans now and, and just knowing that extra security. And I think when people know, you don't know if a fam is on your flight or not. They know how far they can go with a flight attendant before something happens, you know, where they don't want to be involved with the police when they land or involved with the fam on the flight. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, like I said, I think one issue of where I was on break and um, this guy had took some Ambien and had a little bit too much of that alcoholic beverage and was trying to open the aircraft door at door two on the on the Airbus. And they came and got me and uh, I was on break and I always tell my crew, hey, if it's something you don't feel comfortable, by all means, come and get me, come get me up, you know. I would hate to hear you didn't come get me because you wanted me to sleep. By all means, come and get me. And the guy was literally saying somebody was chasing him and he had to get off the plane. But, you know, that's where my police training kicked in as well as my airline training. And and sometimes you have to, uh, with the mental illness going on now, you have to try to react cautiously and calmly. And, and and they'll calm down. If not, and we have to do the other. If this don't happen, this guy calmed down. We moved him away from the exit, and, and he went to sleep for the remainder of the flight. So yeah. that probably was about the most excitement that I've ever encountered in my in my thirty one years. Like I said, we've had medicals, and and, and they've all survived, and and uh, no one passed away so mm-hmm. and no children was born i never you know no children <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have that excitement you know i was like i want to i want a baby like name is jackie, <laughs> Jackie. <laughs> Jackie you know? so i've 
haven't had that excitement, uh, but you know, like I said, I've had colleagues that had uh, experiences that, like, wow, wow experiences. So, you know, I tip my hat to that, and like I said, by the grace of God, I haven't had red, yellow emergencies, so, you know, we're going to keep it that way. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I, I can say I... <sighs> I've had everything except the baby <laughs> oh, <laughs> on wow. the plane. Yeah, everything except that. Uh, flying um, the Accra flights to uh, Ghana, yeah. it was always something. Yeah. We left very late at night, so catering was gone. Everybody was gone from the airport. So if there was ever an issue, we pretty much had to um, put it together and make it happen. I mean, yeah. we've had to totally recater our own plane. We've had to create <laughs> meals from nothing, mm -hmm. uh, which happens a lot with flight attendants. And I don't think passengers understand how many yes. times we've had to create loaves and fishes. That's right. On the plane That's right. <laughs> and, and, and feed people, <laughs> you know, it's, it's amazing. It's magic. Mm -hmm. um, on one of my recent, um, across flights, I actually had a passenger who passed away, mm -hmm. um, and we were actually able to bring him back to life, which wow. was probably the most amazing thing that has ever happened. <sighs> um, one of the passengers ran forward. Uh, we were starting our second service before landing. One of the passengers ran forward and said, there's something wrong with the man who's sitting in front of me so i went there i did the tap and shout which were taught you know are you okay and the man slumped over he was dead wow. um we had four doctors and a nurse on board they laid the gentleman into the aisle and we started cpr and we were able to bring him back together it was uh, wow. myself and another flight attendant bonnie who um were working with the uh, doctors and the nurses we had to do iv it was it lasted the 90 minutes of that whole entire time wow. but this man came back to life wow so that was that was probably oh and i had an airplane catch on fire and we actually evacuated on the on the so yeah oh. <laughs> had it all oh my god but yeah well, knock on wood yeah i've only had two medicals and one emergency and mm -hmm. Nothing came of it, which was good. So wow, seriously, yeah, you're fortunate. <laughs> I'm very lucky. Knock on wood, like I said. Oh yeah. my gosh, we had um, oh so many over the years. I won't take up time sharing all that. And you know, we need to do a flight attendant form 2.0. So maybe I'll pick that up next time. <laughs> Like um, you said, on every flight, it's something. Yeah, it is. It is. It's always. <laughs> Me, you're you're really you're cutting out just a little bit, Jackie. I think she's frozen. <laughs> yeah, she'll she'll come back. Um, yeah, she can probably hear us. Uh, she'll come back. Um, I do want to share with our viewers that the flight attendants are so resourceful and so creative. And over the years, you know, I've, um, and you guys have, no, you've flown with so many that actually have second careers, whether it's so much time in volunteerism, um, raising their small children or furthering their education or, um, or having a second career. So Gabe, I have some pictures that we put together for you and there of some of you guys. And I just want to share this before we transition into talking about flight attendant and work during COVID. And then we're going to do some rapid fire, uh, who are the famous folks that you've had on their flights. Um, and we can just fire out all those names. But uh, first of all, Gabe, go ahead and share those photos. So if you guys can see, we have Jackie here, who is a police officer uh, in Detroit. Jackie, what award are you getting right there? That was the um, Comstead Award, and that's with uh, our chief, James Craig. I got honored, like, that was like maybe my first year uh, where we, where the, uh, I want to say Katrina, was it not Katrina, but the hurricane that came in through Houston two years, two or three years ago, mm -hmm. I can't remember the name, but we put together uh, for the first responders there, they 
socks and t-shirts and pajamas and whatever essentials they needed. So we, we got together with uh, Comerica Park and Ford Field so all the fans could bring in supplies for the first responders because wow. sometimes we get uh, forgotten. You know, we take it to, you know, the seniors, the children, or the, the families, but the first responders who was working around the clock, they needed socks, they needed shoes, they yeah. needed t shirts, they needed sweatshirts. Sure. So, um, you know, I just pitched in and people were dropping stuff off at police headquarters, and we had a huge 18 wheeler logistics truck, and we had to separate socks, t shirts, uh, hand sanitizer, whatever, towels, whatever. And we filled that truck up. And one day I get a call from my coordinator and says, you won the ComStat Award. I'm like, what's wow. that? They're like, just from your work. And I said, that's what we do. Yeah. You know, and he's like, no, the chief wants to uh, recognize you in that. So I felt honored getting that. And, and he, doesn't, he doesn't let me forget about that when, he see, when I see him out. He calls <laughs> me the general... <laughs> yeah. Awesome. You know, yep. at that award, he says, "Hey, anybody need an airline ticket? Go see the general sitting in the back, and I'm sitting out here like." <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was an honor to get recognized by uh, the Detroit Police Department Chief Chief James Craig and mm-hmm. the neighborhood policing. It was it was great, and we helped a lot of first responders. So my captain at the time. Uh, they drove, it was maybe uh, 10 police officers that drove that truck to Houston and um, presented to the first responders. Mm. Mm. That's awesome, Jackie. And I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Uh, And you know, so much of that would come from your flight attendant training, you know, the fish and the fish and, and bread thing that you're talking about. Right. I mean, you would just, we have to provide, I mean, you know, when people have issues, I, I'm so proud of you and happy for you uh, getting that award. I commend you in, in your uh, service of excellence. Thank you. You're mm-hmm. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I mean, it, it takes, it, as they say, it takes a village. And I thought it was just a grand idea of the fans being able to drop off uh, essential needs for, for first responders, police, EMT, of uh, firefighters, mm-hmm. of uh, the clergy, they all benefited from mm. from, from from our drive. Mm. That's beautiful. I love that. Uh, <laughs> Gabe, you have some other photos coming up. What else do we have? I know we have Shane and his volunteerism. We have here's Carolyn. Ga- uh, Carolyn, we have promoted your book on the show a couple other times before. You want to share with us what you're doing here in your recent retirement, ma'am? <laughs> uh, well, thank you for for sharing that. I really appreciate it. Yes. So, um, some years ago, this idea came to me to write a children's book, not to publish it, but for my first granddaughter, um, Leilani, who just turned four. So the the book series is called The Adventures of Maxine and Beanie, and it's about a precocious little girl who has all sorts of of uh, adventures. And um, my idea behind it was to promote the family units because you don't see that. I, I've re- I heard over and over and over again how um, young children of color are not seeing themselves represented in children's literature. Mm-hmm. I did a little research and only 19% of any books published for children is multicultural or has a um, person of color in the leadership role of that book. Mm -hmm. So it's something that is very um, necessary. And I've gotten a lot of a lot of support from people who are like, you know, they're giving it to um, their their children or their nephews their nieces or people that they know in their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're very kind about um, stating that the children are excited to see somebody that looks like them. Yeah. Uh, represented in children's literature yeah. and um, the big part of the book that I think sets it apart from other children's books is the section inside called paws P-A-W-S as you can see there's a kitty so it's two <laughs> little paws like that and it's a play on words because you do pause P-A-U-S-E yeah. in the book to discuss 
um, things that are very, very important um, subjects with children. And it's about safety. It's about if you are um, in an unsafe situation, what do you do? How do you handle it? It's about using your imagination, reading, family, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So. I love it. Well, I already bought my copy and gave it to our little neighbor girl, and I'll be getting the second copy as well. Thank you. I'm so proud of you for what you're doing, girl. I'm telling you, Thank flight you. attendants are talented. <laughs> <laughs> and Shane, you spend so much time traveling and uh, giving back to communities around the world. Um, you do work with uh, Habitat for Humanity, and you're just always giving, and of course, that's your heart. As it is, yeah, yeah. I know there's so many great pictures out there with um, you and Anne and Linda. How fun to yeah. to serve was, alongside your friends too. The opportunity was awesome. Um, unfortunately, COVID is you know um, taking that opportunity away. But just having the two the two international builds that I was on was uh, was an amazing thing that Delta did mm -hmm. and Hab Habitat for Humanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, giving yeah. back to the poor communities and yep. Um, Argentina and Mexico, the two that I did, it was, uh, mm -hmm. it was, it was heartfelt just to see the expression on the people's faces when you completed the job. And even yeah. during the whole time building and getting to meet the families and, you know, working with your fellow colleagues, it, it's quite a, an accomplishment. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for always giving back. Um, I love you, boo. And I love your heart. Thanks. Yeah, um, I see Anne here in this other picture. Then in the next shot we have, you, uh, this is our, our friend that we all love and adore. Yeah, um, Cesar. Yeah, there's oh, Cesar. Yeah. Hey, boo. I do, too. Yeah. He is so talented with his art. I actually just uh, purchased um, a piece. I uh, hope my husband's busy at work and not watching this, but for my husband's birthday of John Lewis, you guys saw that piece? Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I got in in time and I got I got mine coming. Wow. I'm so nice. excited. It actually is supposed to be um, delivered today. And then we have uh, Kim Godby, uh, Godby I all know here out of Detroit and and her love for Paris, of course, and, and her French uh, boutique that she has her own business on the side. She's been running successful. Look at this uh, this uh, piece that that Cess had done. Oh my goodness! And there's Kim's boutique. Um, then we have Gretchen, who's right here in Minneapolis, and she has been traveling with her dogs across the country in national dog shows, competing, and has uh, just a, a thriving business on the side with that. And here we have Carol Kanane is in here. She has a travel business that she's had for years. She recently took the early retirement as well, as we know so many of our colleagues have. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, here's Jared. Uh, in fact, he was going to be in studio with us today on the show. He is on his flight right now, so he wasn't able to be here, but he is a singer, entertainer. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, Daniel Compton here, is a uh, uh, musician, voice coach, um, extraordinaire. Uh, I believe homes in Amsterdam and Atlanta, right, you guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he yeah, and his like husband have Daniel. both. Yeah, mm -hmm. Daniel's yeah. Paris. I thought it was Paris. Is it? Is no, it Paris? Oh, it is Amsterdam. Oh, is it yeah. Amsterdam? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then we have uh, Richard that runs an entertainment company, putting on and producing events. I can tell you here in the Twin Cities, he's given back to the community so much. And then, of course, there's our friend Eric. We have uh, modeling. We have uh, my girl Roz, uh, who has a real estate license and over the years has flipped houses. Um, this is a very short list of, of folks that that I love and that I'm so proud of. There's, there's Susan. She's a ski instructor uh, there. Do you see that picture? Isn't that great, Shane? Wow. <laughs> um, no. and, yeah. And and what other uh, industries do you guys know that flight attendants are involved in? Other careers? or? Um, there's doctors, lawyers, yeah. Yeah. chiropractors. Yes. Restaurateurs. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, a lot of restaurant tours. A lot of restaurant tours. Real estate agents. A lot of real estate agents. Interior uh, design. Interior design. Yeah. Uh, Estheticians. Yeah. Automotive. 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 Yeah. Construction. Yeah. Um, LMPs. Um, mm -hmm. Estheticians. Nursing is big. N big yeah. 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 A lot of nurses. A lot yeah. Of nurses. True. Yeah. <laughs> 
and and yeah. historically, I think we've had nurses. Well, of course, that's how the flight attendant had started, right? right. And so traditionally, um, you know, we've always have had um, quite a high percentage of uh, flight mm -hmm. attendants are also nurses. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so many well, flight attendants. How many, how many people with degrees started this? You know, started in the airline industry. You know. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. From having a bachelor's or a MBA or whatever to right. go to be a flight attendant. You know. It's right. Crazy. <laughs> and it's just right. so yeah. difficult to walk yeah. away from with all the flexibility. And so, you know, we can have these these second careers and these other opportunities to raise our families and to and to serve our communities and that's another thing flight attendants are just so generous the volunteerism is i mean it's got to be in the 90 per, 90th percentile around it there mm -hmm. don't you guys think yeah. um just people are uh, always yeah, yeah. Giving definitely and, mm -hmm giving Definitely. back and, and serving. Um, okay, we had a couple questions that came in, and I know I had told you guys that, that we would do this. So, all right, so I want you guys, I'm going to give you a second to think about, everybody always asks us, who, who uh, are the famous folks that we've had on our flights, right? So mm -hmm. we can just do rapid fire. Um, let's make sure that we can hear each other, though, with Zoom. Sometimes Zoom will cut somebody out. Um, <laughs> But we, how about if we just go round the horn here? So looking at the screen, it looks like, Carolyn, you're on the top, and then let's just go. Um, it. Well, it's funny because I see my husband has posted a question here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yeah, funny. Pierre. Yeah, that's my husband, Pierre. Yeah, yeah. Pierre. <laughs> hey, Pierre Landro, how are you? Yes, yeah, I see that now over here. Okay, there it is. Yeah, well, I know what he wants me to talk about. He wants me to talk about when I had Rihanna on the flight. Okay, um, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, she was uh, traveling with her um, associate, I guess her personal assistant. Mm -hmm. And so she was trying to hide and she was sort of incognito. And I did yeah. not call her Rihanna. Yeah. Um, you know, I called her Miss, Miss, uh, yeah. what's her last name? Uh, Fuentes? No. Robin. Anyway, I called her by her last name. Mm -hmm. um, she wanted her steak well done. So, you oh. know, cooking on the airplane wow. is challenging as it is. Yes. So yeah. um, I did two rounds in the oven and then stuck it in the bun warmer. <laughs> did you really? Wow. Oh, yeah. So that thing. And she told me it was perfectly done. Huh. Um, <laughs> as she was leaving, uh, she had on a pair of her um eyeglasses that she was going to Paris to do the fashion show right. and I said that they were I complimented her and she stopped she turned around and gave me the biggest hug in front of like all the passengers and, the, and people were like oh my gosh did she just <laughs> hug you so my husband uh, I text him and I told him what happened and he tells me he goes well don't shower until I get home from work so I can <laughs> hug you too <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, Carolyn, I'm so glad that you said that because we all know that we don't need to mention their names, but there unfortunately are many on board and we are instructed sometimes not to look them in the eyes, that we are on, not to speak to them directly. We are only to speak to their handler. So we'll just move on past those folks. But <laughs> who else, Carolyn? Right. Throw right. out another name. Yeah, we, we've all had them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we have. <laughs> All right, throw out the, throw out some names. Go ahead. Uh, Gloria Stefan, but that was way back. That's like twenty years back when yeah. she was, you know, at the top of her career and yeah, the high career. She's a very nice lady. Very nice yeah. lady. I I would say the most um, inspiring, the most sentimental was having Rosa Parks on the flight. Wow. And Did uh, you? she was, you know, <sighs> my grandparents, my grandparents would host her when she would take all the high schoolers from Detroit down to walk the Edmonds Pettus Bridge every summer. So, you know, when she walked on the flight, I was like, <gasps> and you know, my <laughs> grandmother would call and say, you need to come down here and take this walk. And I'm like, I'm not doing that walk, you know, so she's like, you need to come. And then I had to let her know that I'm a Meadows. And she said, Henry and Ada Meadows? I said, yes, there's not too many Meadows that I know. 
And I said, I am a product of Henry and Ada Meadows. Wow. And she hugged me and I just started crying. Of course. And she, she says, you know, and I said, thanks to you. This, this, all I wanted to do was thank you. And we had the picture of my grandmother and her when, when she would come down and, and they would host them because my grandfather was the mayor of a small little town called Whitehall, Alabama, right between Selma and right in between Montgomery. Uh-huh. So, you know, uh, I couldn't appreciate it at that time being younger. But when I met her on a flight, I immediately called my grandmother from a payphone. I put maybe like six dollars and quarters <laughs> in the payphone to call her and let her know who I met. And she said, job well done. It was free to be there. Job well done. The, the, the funniest celebrity I ever had was, uh, who was the exercise guy named Richard uh, Simmons? Richard Simmons yeah. with the shorts. Yeah, 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 I think we all had him on the flight once. We <laughs> all had him on the flight, right? That was probably the funniest character, funniest guy I've ever had on the flight. The other celebrities always were pretty much quiet. Uh, yeah. Really respectful. I've never had anybody on the flight that I couldn't give eye, eye contact with or speak to the handler. So, and I, you know me, I probably, probably would have been like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, you know, so in the, the years with dealing with celebrities and people like that, I must say, uh, Rosa Parks was the most inspired mm-hmm. and inspirational person that I got to meet before her. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Incredible. Yeah. Um, Elizabeth Montgomery, she was oh. so sweet. Huh. Oh, um, wow. I've had Akon. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. He signed everyone's autograph and took pictures with everyone. Oh. He was he was so nice, just a really kind kind man. Yeah. Um, Prince, gosh, so many. <laughs> Prince Mitzi Gaynor back in the day. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, she mm-hmm. was very sweet too. Very nice. When we were L.A. based, we had a lot in and out of L.A. I think. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, Bill Bivens. Prince. Um, Prince. <laughs> Yeah, Prince a couple times. Um, uh, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, yeah. they were always on our flight. Yeah. Always. Yes, yeah, they were. Yeah. Yeah. They were always on the L.A. Minneapolis route, right? right. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, always. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think they knew us by name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and those um, those famous uh, sumo wrestlers, you guys remember that in the 747? Oh, yeah, Akibono. Yeah, and, and yeah. so sometimes they would take out that centerpiece between the two seats, you know? <laughs> And, like and I there. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had Yo Yo Ma and his cello. They both got their own seats. Ah, yes. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Very cool. Wow. Um, my first was Al Pacino. I was 21 years old, and it was a Detroit indie flight. Very, very short flight. And I noticed him when he walked by me on the 727 uh, stretch. I was there at the the closet there, um, at right behind uh, first class, helping to board, and in my burgundy uniform. And he walked by me, and he was I'm about five three and a half, and he was eye level with me, and my heels were just a couple <laughs> inches. And I thought, wow, such a handsome guy, you know, for a short guy, you know. I mean, my husband's six <laughs> four, so I my like my you know tall, but I thought, wow, he's handsome. And so then he goes and he sits in coach, and when we're doing the beverage service. Um, he was sitting in Nine Delta, and he ordered a gin and tonic. And so I went, and I made his drink, and, and I looked at him, and I said, you know, I said, you look a lot like, and I, I reversed the words. I said, you look a lot like the guy who stars as Al Pacino in Scarface, <laughs> instead of stars as Antonio Montoya, right? And I said, you know, you look a lot like the guy that stars as Al Pacino in Scarface. And he just was kind of annoyed with me. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about, you know. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, you, you should check out the movie. I mean, you, you really do resemble him. And he's like, okay, okay. Well, in hindsight, of course, he thought I was probably teasing and knew exactly who he was, you know. Mm-hmm. And so then I pushed the beverage cart and I went up to 10 and you would have thought I was on a soul flight or something. He literally reached toward the back of my skirt and pulled on my skirt and I turned and looked and now he's jo- he's joking and laughing and he says, well, sometimes I get Robert De Niro <laughs> and I went back. 
So I stepped back and I went to him and I took his face like this, you guys. Okay. I squatted down right in front of him. I took his face and I went left to right. And I said, no, 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 it's, it's not De Niro. You really, you really resemble that guy that stars as Al Pacino. And he said, who's this? And now he knew I was serious that I had no clue. Yeah. And I said, um, Al Pacino. And he says, oh, hmm, and what's the movie? And I said, and I'm like this. I was 21. I said, it's called Scarface. The acting is incredible. I've seen it like 10 times. <laughs> but they say the F word a lot. And there's, <laughs> there's, there's nudity. So I just want to warn you. But really, check out that movie because you really do resemble this guy. <laughs> And so on I went. Okay, short flight, because it's Detroit Indy, right? Yeah. So I'm up at the front jump seat, and for the only time in my entire career, they couldn't open um, the forward door, the boarding door. <laughs> so I'm in 1B in the jump seat, and so everybody has to about face and deplane out of the aft stairs. That's the only time that we ever had that issue where we couldn't open that door, okay? So everybody turned around to plane, and so there I, I couldn't say goodbye to everybody, right? So mm -hmm. I went to the back galley. You know, we went through and picked up all our People magazines and stuff, right? And right. went to the back galley, and I was talking to the flight attendants, and this, this flight attendant, this guy, hands me this little piece of paper. And it was, um, it was a receipt from the, remember the host stores? They mm -hmm. ran all the airport stores, mm -hmm. right? Host. It was a host receipt that he must have scrambled to grab a piece of paper real quick. And in pencil, he wrote, Sonia, you are very wise, underline, thanks, Al. <laughs> and immediately the conversation rewound in my head. And they were like, who was that guy? And I go, oh, oh, no, no. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. I said, you guys, that was Al Pacino, but I told him he looks like the guy who stars as Al Pacino instead of Antonio Montoya. I can't believe I held his face. I told him, oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, pretty embarrassing. I always say I would love to see Al again, and if he'd remember the flight attendants who's holding his face, telling him about <laughs> himself, basically. <laughs> Only you, Sonia, Sonia. Girl, I know. <laughs> only you, only you. I know. Only you. And tons of politicians, you know, we've all had all the politicians on and stuff. Of, oh, yeah. Of course, not Barack Obama, but um, the I Clintons. Bill Clinton. No, actually, I non rabbed with Bill Clinton. Yeah, I was going to so. say, actually, Memphis Base, those Memphis Base flight attendants had Hillary and um, Bill Clinton on quite a bit over the years. Yeah. Yeah. But I never did. Yeah. Mm -mm. No, yeah. I never did. And uh, Robert De Niro, well, see, you know, traveling to Paris as a guest a lot, Yeah, um, I got to sit up front. And so I would see a lot of celebrities, mm -hmm. you yeah. know. Right. Wait, the real Robert there. De Niro or was it Al Pacino? No, it was the real Robert De Niro. <laughs> he was filming something in uh, in Paris. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. But you know, when you're not in uniform, you definitely right. can't just walk up randomly to people and start talking. I know. So. That's the thing. Yeah. I've non revved so many times with people. And one time I non revved with Prince on, but I was non revving, and that's different. Oh, and when we say non rev, you guys, that means that we're flying as a passenger and we really we don't identify ourselves as a crew member. Obviously, we're not a working crew member, so that's kind of a faux pas. But, um, Yes, I've known with so many celebrities, uh, and you just can't say anything, you know? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. Well, you guys, our time is up um, for now here just about. We definitely need to do a 2.0, because... Yes. You flight attendants are just amazing. And um, oh, one thing I did want to touch on, though, that we didn't do before is, can you guys just share with us what it's looking like uh, flying in this COVID era? How, how are you protected where the precautionary measures, the testing and stuff that you guys are doing in in-flight and all that? Um, Don't be taking the lead on that, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I bounced right back. That's what I was just getting ready to say. You know, back in March of, of 2020, and I had this conversation earlier on the podcast earlier this morning, where last, last year this time, we didn't know. We didn't know what to expect. We didn't know. You know, everyone, everyone was afraid when you walk into the airport on 
My last day at that time was March 24th. It was such an eerie feeling. Everything was closed. McDonald's was closed. All the stores were closed. People were scared. You could hear a pin drop. You didn't know if you were going to have a job this week or next month. Yeah. But, you know, Delta has definitely stepped up the, the game with the sanitizing on the, of every flight, mm-hmm. uh, keeping Lysol wipes on the flight, yeah. uh, hand, hand sanitizing to the passengers once they uh, board the aircraft. If you need a, a refresher of your mask, refreshing the mask for, for the customers. So, so Delta has really, really, really stepped up the, up the game and continuing to, to block that middle seat. Absolutely. To keep people yeah, at yeah. ease, keep people comfortable while they're flying. Mm-hmm. So I, I definitely commend the company for that. Yeah, I um, obviously... During COVID times as well as <clears throat> just to see the latest, the USA Today, um, the Delta was named number one for... Um, service yes. of all the other international airlines. Yeah. So I think during this time we've really stepped up and we, you know, we've made the customers feel calm and, and, you know, and shown them that we are, we do care. And, and the mask thing is, is an issue. It's, you know, we're the mask police and it's, uh, yeah, it's nice that the government yeah. has mandated that now. And, mm-hmm. you know, our roles aren't as, stringent to have to tell everybody to you know do this everybody should know because they sign a waiver and everything else right right yeah i think there's a lot of planning and preparation and um careful thought you know and really being intentional and and i do i i commend delta i've uh just non-revved on just a couple airlines i i've you know really um paired way back on on my non-revving and stuff but um they're doing it right and they've been doing it right from the jump i keep saying that and and i commend the crews just always making everybody feel assured and and confident and um and they're always just just so professional and and just as patient as ever so um i do commend them and you guys are being tested um before your your flights and stuff too aren't you we are Mm-hmm. We can get tested, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can get. Yeah, because I see on Facebook all the time, everybody's um, pretty much opting to. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm just, they're, they're definitely doing it right. And um, you guys are going through a lot. You know, flight attendants make sacrifices, um, hidden sacrifices that people are just not even aware. They're completely off the radar. But it, it, there are sacrifices being made in one way or another, literally on every single flight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I thank you guys all for being our guests on the Solmanad show with Sonia. Um, do each of you have one final word or anything that you'd like to share before uh, we go off the air here? Thank you. For uh, well, I saw, I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead, Sean. No, no, no. That's okay. I just thank you so much for inviting me on the show, and it's been a pleasure uh, to provide you the information that you wanted to portray. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Shane. I appreciate it. Yeah, I was just going to say thank you for the invitation. Um, I saw someone ask if you would have your children be flight attendants. And if my daughter had wanted to be a flight attendant, I, I would have supported that 100%. Sure. Um, absolutely. So, but yes, thank you so much for the opportunity to to speak about our career yeah. Um, because of COVID, I did take the early retirement. I wasn't ready, but then I was ready. So, <laughs> yeah. congratulations. Well, you know, once again, thank you for having me, and thank you for thinking of me for this great forum yeah. to 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 spread awareness uh, of our jobs and, and and our careers. We all had great careers, including you, Sonia. Yeah, um, thank it was you. always a pleasure flying with you. It was always a pleasure talking to you outside of the airline and unfortunately we were trying to get together this summer and my you know you know when you got that 5 a.m welcome wake up call right I was like girl you know i gotta get up <laughs> so, but i'm gonna make a i'm gonna make a oh, she gave me a rain check on it so i told her one yep. day i'll just fly in and, and yep. just let her take me around the twin yep. cities and yep. watch her awesome work like she's always been doing so <laughs> Thank you again. It was great seeing Shane. It was great seeing my twin, Carolyn. <laughs> and obviously, it was great seeing you, Sonia. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. 
Thanks, sis. I love you. I love all of you so much. Thank you so much for being a part of this. We are family for life. We are very, we have a very special bond between all of us. And uh, I just wanted to extend this platform and just share this love and this mutual um, adoration and admiration and respect that we have for one another and shed a little more light on uh, the uh, the industry and the career of flight attendants. So uh, thank you all so much. I'll see you guys back here next week on the Solmanad Show with Sonia. Uh, I hope to be doing some special coverage for um, the Chauvin murder trial uh, for Officer Chauvin and uh, who murdered George Floyd and um, the uh, the charges that are up on the other three officers uh, who uh, took George's life. Um, that day so it's going to be real hot here in the twin cities uh it's very important all eyes are going to be back here again on on the twin cities and um i'll do my part to roll up my sleeves and come together side by side shoulder to shoulder and heart to heart uh with my my local community and uh with my community across the country uh, that being anybody who cares and is concerned for the injustices that are happening here in america so tune in next week and uh we'll be bringing you more information about that so everybody thank you so much for joining us here on the solmanad show with sonia y'all stay blessed in whatever you put your hands to do until next time ciao